so I'm speaking with composer uh, and artist Evan Roth, who has uh, very early in his career demonstrated uh, very talent and ability with his music in film and television. Evan, thank you so much for uh, speaking today. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, so to start, um, where did you? Uh, when did you get into music? And more importantly, when did that become clear that you wanted to s stead on the path of TV and film composing? Uh, well, I started playing piano when I was seven and uh, classically trained and uh, took piano lessons ever since and uh, ended up going to Chapman University for uh, piano performance and got into film music there in the film school. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, what, was it always music that, that was interesting you about film or was there other aspects of filmmaking too that maybe you were going <laughs> to get into? Uh, I did a little bit of sound design, so that, oh, really? was, that was fun. Yeah. But, uh, no, it was always music and film music ever since I was a kid, you know, always inspired me and uh, that's what, that's what really excites me. So, <laughs> so what yeah. kind of, uh, what kind of music, I mean, maybe outside of film scores, but what kind of music or composers made an impression on you, uh, growing up or even today still? Uh, definitely John Powell and John Williams. And, uh, there's a long list of others, but those are the main two. Yeah. No, I love, I mean, both of them, of course, but John Powell, I definitely impressionable grew up, uh, uh with him and, uh, I got to interview him just for How to Train Your Dragon. I was like, oh my God, it's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Um, I actually got to meet him uh, a couple couple months ago, which oh, was really cool. Yeah, 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 he's so funny too. He's a funny guy. <laughs> yeah, he is funny. <laughs> Um, so now, now you've done a lot of commercial work, um, which you get, you got recognition for at the HMMAs and, uh, a lot of composers I talk to say, uh, you know, commercial work is the best training. So what kind of skills do you learn writing music for commercials? Uh, the main thing is, uh, you get really good with deadlines. That's for sure. Um, you know, being able to, to conform your music to picture, you know, with all the different edits, all the different versions, you know, that's very crucial for scoring so you learn very quickly and uh, you also learn you know what works and what doesn't and uh, I've I'm really thankful to uh, have been able to do commercials it's yeah. really given me a good foothold for everything is it hard to get I mean the commercials are what 30 seconds sometimes you get a 60 second spot but is it hard to nail it down that in 30 seconds to get everything in that time frame uh, you know, usually, usually I can get it done pretty quickly, but um, you'd be surprised. You know, some commercials can take you know six months. Wow. And, uh, I'm actually I'm actually in the studio right now for a final mix for one of my commercials. So that's um, we started that back in. Uh, I got involved in February. So. Wow. <laughs> um, so now when you approach a narrative, uh, what's the first thing about a film that jumps out to you, uh, that speaks to you musically? Is it the characters, the plot, the setting? I mean, what's really the first thing that begins to pull music out of you from a film? Definitely the characters and the plot. You know, it's, it's the overall message of the film that kind of sets the, sets the tone of the score, sets the tone of uh, everything, really. That's, that's what I uh, work off generally. Yeah. So, and, and if a score requires a theme or a melodic material, is that something that you focus on first, or do you kind of try to find the sound or the style first before finding the melody? Like, and what kind of, I guess, what's the first approach that you do in the process? Yeah, I generally, I generally like to sit at the piano and just kind of, you know, after I've uh, maybe seen a visual, a clip, or maybe read the script, I like to sit at the piano and just see what comes out naturally, um, and kind of flush it out. And usually, I come up with some melodic material and a theme, and I like to work off uh, the score from those ideas. So I have a, you know, a foundation. Right. And uh, so you, ha you have a, a documentary that you scored coming out, is that right? Did Brent tell That's me? right. Yeah, I'm still working on that. Yeah. So uh, when you, so you, what, what's the documentary called? It's called Marie versus State, and it's a, uh, it's a sports documentary. Oh, wow. So... Do you treat the project differently than a, a fictional narrative, considering the subjects and story are all real? Does it carry any more emotional significance or weight, or do you kind of just try to m treat it as a narrative, treat it with, you know, just like you would any other film? Definitely. I mean, I think it's a little, it really depends on the genre, and I, I think given that it's a true story and, uh, uh, you know, that's, not only is it inspiring, but it... Uh, 
it allows me to create something different than I would, you know, as opposed to a drama or a comedy or something, you know, it's, it definitely uh, changes the, my mindset at least. Right. As a songwriter, um, when you're working with lyrics, is it different than when you're not working with lyrics? I mean, how do you structure the emotional, I guess, I guess center of a piece of music when you have lyrics versus uh, without? I've done it both ways, but uh, generally for the song, it's uh, it's driven by the lyric and also the melody. Right. So sometimes I come up with the melody first and, and then the lyrics come, but, you know, if I get lucky, the, the melody and the lyrics come at the same time and that's when it, it really... Uh, it's a special moment, so. So, and if you're working, I mean, if you're doing a film score, you have image usually to work off of. And when you're writing a song, what's the inspiration there? Is it just life experience internalizing and kind of externalizing your internal emotions? Is it just working from within with no images? That's actually that's actually just it. Yeah, it's uh, life experiences, and um, you know, maybe maybe sometimes I specifically want to write about something. Maybe. Um, you know, maybe a person I'm writing about, so maybe I'll find some material that I can look at or something, some, maybe some visual that inspires me, or, you know, maybe I'm writing about, um, you know, a city. I, I wrote, a, I just wrote a song called City Lights, mm -hmm. so, you know, I thought of some, uh, what the downtown life would look at, like, uh, at night, so. Oh, wow, so, um, so when you work on a film, and you I uh, think one of the most important aspects of, of a composer is working with the director, uh, for a composer, uh, for you, what, what are kind of some characteristics that you look for in a director that you really appreciate? Uh, the main thing is probably passion. You know, working with somebody that's passionate about what they do and, you know, they, they love what they do, they live for what they do, that's, that's the most inspiring thing to me. And that's what I that's what I like to look for. And what, passionate. Absolutely, because I know there's some directors who probably who don't are not passionate or, or not even not passionate, but just not communicative with their uh, I guess vision, and it makes it probably more difficult for you. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. So just looking at maybe certain genres, are there any certain genres that that speak to you more than others? What are kind of certain genres you love to work in musically? Music. Basically, I I'm a, and historical drama. That's probably my that's my favorite type of uh, genre. And I I got the privilege to do a um, a Holocaust uh, short film drama. Oh wow! Which was really cool to do. And I did a uh, it was a short film, um, and I did a score for that. And so, if you're working in something like that, do you? I mean, do you try to make the music part of the period? Are you uh, or just kind of? stripping it down so it's more, I guess, timeless? I mean, how, do you, how did you approach something like that? Given that it was, uh, you know, a Holocaust film and um, I wanted to stay true to that, you know, Eastern European sound. Mm -hmm. you know, not so much uh, like Schindler's List. Obviously, that's one of, that's actually one of my favorite scores from John Williams, but um, it also depends on the aesthetic of the film and, and it, it was appropriate uh, to have that Eastern European tone because right. of uh you know the setting and everything so it it matched and uh it felt right and it you know it was emotional it met all of my requirements so that's what i did so now before we we wrap up and kind of you're talking about your favorite genres but i always like to ask composers this one question if you could score any film ever made pretending the original score never existed uh what film would you choose <laughs> uh john pal don't get mad at me um, born Identity. Well, good choice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love those scores. They're, me too. And they're, that's, it's crazy that he, I don't know, he replaced, I think he replaced Carter Burwell on that one. So that's yep. amazing how yep. it turned out and became amazing. such a huge part of his uh, filmography. But uh, Evan, thank you so much for your time today. And it was such a great pleasure to chat. And I uh, can't wait uh, for the next project. So we can hopefully do this again. Thanks so much, Kai. I really appreciate it. Enjoy. Absolutely.